Hello and good day. This is Horace from In Focus with Horace, frame by frame. I have experience behind the camera. I don't mind being in front of the camera either. I have fondness for photography and videography. Also, I have an affinity towards science, math, art, and music. So just with that in mind, I have a lot of, a lot of things about my heart that I like to explore. So that's just something I would let you guys know. Um, this show is geared towards photography and videography. Um, we consistently deal with issues in front of the camera, behind the camera, and with all, all about. Um, I just, all right. Is, uh, we deal with um, the, the talent, technicians, and can delve into the industry and talk about the, the, the equipment and the techniques. All right, today in, um, in focus, we have discussed well, the ins and outs of photography with Mr. Raphael McClara, who's in our studio today. I'm going to pick his brain. We're going to talk about, I mean, we can talk about photography and see how, what he thinks about the, the, the industry and what can be done. How you doing, Raphael? All right, how you doing, Harris? Glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. So I'm going to start off with um, just picking your brain, try to talk to you about photography and um, see if we get a better understanding of the, the industry's like. Mm -hmm. um, how hard is it to find inspiration to stay focused? Like the whens, the wheres, the whos, the whats? Um, it just depends on your talent and it depends what you're trying to do with your photography. Okay. Like what kind of, kind of, kind of, what kind of goals do you have with your photography? Uh, my photography is kind of broad. I like shooting um, buildings. Um, I like working with models at times and just like special events. All right. Sometimes I like a, a good session going well. Maybe if you're in a studio where you can control the settings and you have opportunity to be in charge and you can get exactly what you want, mm -hmm. I think that they come, the, the product that comes out from that is great. And it's also the contrast is um, there's times where uh, you're in the field or in an event and you can't change the lighting, uh, people are dancing, there's people moving around, people are speaking, and it's kind of harder. So it's a contrast of two, two, different, two different issues with um, photography. And how do you find them? Which one do you prefer? And which one do you feel is harder than arrest or just, uh, or, or just a better situation? Uh, yeah, you suggest by the situation. Um, Sometimes you don't have to use um, certain lightings. At nighttime, you want to capture the, the mood of the party and stuff like that, so your lighting don't have to be the same as if you're shooting in a, in a studio setting and stuff like that. You could control the lighting. Yes. Or if you're shooting outside during the daytime. So you just have to go with it. Okay, okay. Um, from, from event to event, do you find it for inspiration that, that way also? Like for the next event, when said, you can take something from... Inspiration how, like... Uh, just something that motivates you. Can you see, something happens, like you see a, you get a good shot, or you have a good, um, a good shoot, and does it motivate you for the next time? Um, we went to the event um, by B&H, and that was excellent. Um, I got to shoot some professional models, and that was probably like the second time that I worked. And that's my preference, to work with people who know what to do behind the camera because it makes the photography a whole lot easier yeah. um, and you can focus more on getting the right shot versus directing somebody move here, move there. I find getting the right shot happens a lot more often when you have from professional photographers, sorry, professional um, um, talent, professional models and things like that. I believe that there's times when you can just uh, can set you at ease, they kind of, kind of feed, feed off each other, they know the cues, they, you know their cues, they know your cues and they can hit the, the, the mark on uh, several uh, time and time again. Yes, yes. Because um, it, it has to be a chemistry there. I recently did a shoot um, for somebody, and um, they, they weren't really there. They weren't invested in what, they, what we were doing and stuff like that. So they were not looking at the camera. They were, I had to like, direct them step by step. And it was something that was not like, worth following and stuff like that. But when you work with professional models, they know how to hold their pose. Yes. They know how to move. They know what you, what you want from them, and they, you, know, you get better shots. OK. Um, uh, uh, sometime in the future, do you feel that going to events will be something that is kind of outdated? No, no, you always go to events and take photography. That's, that's a key thing. There's always going to be people to do the runways and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, there's always going to be somebody to try to model or clothes or do something. So that's yeah. never going to go away. I, I believe so yeah. too. I believe like um, it's, it's getting expanded. Um, photography is growing a lot. Um, I feel like uh, just like the industry is getting a lot of promotion from the technology that's coming out. Mm. And but so much technology is like, where do you see the photography, uh, the future photography going um, in terms of technology, mirrorless, DSLR, and cell phones? Where do you see it going with, this, with the technology, the science, and what's out there? Yeah, well, one of the best things going on now is just the, um, like with software and the cameras and stuff like that, that you take a photo and um, the ca um, in the computer, it'll correct your photo for you, stuff like that, like through artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, so mirrorless, you just get like a sharper um, photo. And yeah, it's just, it just keeps progressing. All right. Sounds good. Um, 
How do you find that cell phones, how do you find cell phones fit, fit into the, the industry? Um, cell phones is good and they're getting even better. Um, it just has to do a lot with, um, with who, who's holding the, the equipment, yeah. whether it's a camera or it's a cell phone and stuff like that, because you could get great photography with both. Okay. Like one doesn't out trump the other at times and stuff like that. So it just depends on who's using the equipment and how they're handling the equipment. But like um, phones, um, somewhere in the future is going to replace the digital cameras. Okay. Yeah. I agree with you that um, it's kind of the, the photographer that makes a difference, not just the equipment. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's good to know your equipment, the, the settings, um, especially going to manual at times. Um, to be able to adjust what you need to adjust um, to capture, kind of be directive and kind of to the point which, which you're looking for, mm -hmm. what you're trying to get. So just with that, it's like, um, how do you see this, like, like um, the way photography has been going? How, what would you do for somebody who wants to be a better photographer? You have the equipment, you have the prices, the, the different type of technology. How would you become a better photographer just to take care of what you got to take care of? Just keep practicing, just keep shooting. That's, that's how you get best. I mean, I started shooting with my phone. And some of my pictures, people can't tell whether I shot it with my camera or, you know, with my cell phone or if I shot it yes. with my actual camera. Because it's, you have to know the equipment that you have. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to invent something today, a new camera, what would it be? What would you put into it? What would you put into it? You don't have to know the science. What would you put into it? What would the features be? What, what are you oh. hope, hoping for, for the most to come out of a new photography, new, new, new cameras? I don't know. A camera that could take the photo by itself. <laughs> it just picks up and knows. Yeah. There's a Kodak moment, click, and it does it automatically. Yeah. That's the only thing I would do. All right. All right. Um, me as a photographer, I used to mess around with film. I have, my, I have a cell phone. I have an iPhone camera. Mm -hmm. um, I have a port and shoot camera, the old school port and shoot cameras in the past. And I have an instant camera. An instant film camera, so mm -hmm. I kind of like mess around with them. Like out of the past, if you, if you ever have like a, a day where you take an old camera out, like a, a, um, like a, how do you say, a, um, Polaroid camera or something like that, we go out there and use that. Do you ever just go back in nostalgia style, go back into the, the past and bring something out? Yeah, when I was in high school, I um, used to do um, photography with the cameras, um, with the regular cameras. So yeah, it's an experience. It's not there's need and stuff like, that, but it's good to know how it was done back in the days. All right, thank you, thank you. Actually. Uh, we have some photos of yours and mine. I would like, mm -hmm. to, like to take this opportunity to actually go through, run through those, okay. and we can discuss what, the, 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 what happened in the moment. Discuss the moment and just um, see how we dig deeper into okay. the pictures. All right, first photo. All right, um, that's, that's my photo. That's taken down at the South Street Seaport. Um, that's the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, that, that day, I took my friends down with a tripod and my camera, and the goal was to get some night footage um, to try to practice. This is when I first got my camera. Um, we got down there, uh, set up in camera, got a, the auto timer, the auto shutter, and I set it for two seconds. So I, because what happens is when you take night photos, they actually, the exposure, the cameras are open longer. So it's, it's the tendency to shake and get blur. So it's the, the, the contra counteract that, um, that the tendency, you can just um, click on the button and it'll sh click the shutter um, when you're not, not next to it so it doesn't blur the camera or shake the camera. Um, that's Brooklyn Bridge, uh, and that's uh, it's kind of one of my favorite pictures, one of my first ones I took at night. So we, what we could do right now is actually go on to the next the next picture. Uh, this is actually thing at Central Park, and what I was trying to do is work on the focus. I was practicing, I think it's back focus is called, mm -hmm. and I was trying to get the focus to focus on the fence, not the water. And I think I did a good, a good job of that. Um, the water is kind of black, uh, blurred out in the background, mm -hmm. and you can see the fence is in, is in focus. So I kind of like, I had fun with that. Um, that's called just, uh, like the, just like the, the technique of the DSLRs and cameras these days, kind of look for um, opportunities like this and try to kind of capture, uh, um, promote, uh, capture, uh, sort of, um, just kind of promote, just uh, be eventually good, uh, good about that. All right, next picture. Um, that's the Central Park also, that's the, 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 the skyline. Mm -hmm. um, that's why the, it's actually the, the, to the right of the picture is the Belvedere Castle, mm -hmm. the famous castle that's in Central Park. And again, I was working on settings that time. I was working on um, light, light exposure, and I exposed on the mm -hmm. light behind the, the buildings. And I, did, I worked on that in Photoshop. So I kind of got the kid picked up from the, from the original photos. It was kind of it was kind of gray, and I got the color kind of got the, the colors to pop after some work in Photoshop. You can go to the next one. That was the, the same position. That like that post was actually behind me from was taking the other picture that we just went through. And this post again is practicing the shutter speed. So, um, Manual, manual, oh, sorry, focus and light metering. And I metered on the sun behind the light, behind the, behind the, the pole, and I kind of copped the picture there, and I um, was just practicing right there. The good thing I know is just knowing equipment helps out a lot. 
So practicing, going out to the field, just, just trying the settings, just trying to do something new and, and trying to get better at what you, what you know you think is um, productive in the future. And right, we go to the next one. That was the last one of my mm -hmm. pictures. So that's kind of what we went through, that's our pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. What we can do now is actually, I know you brought some pictures of your own. And it'd be great if you could just um, get, see a couple of those and um, discuss those. And you can take on the floor right now. Okay. Yeah, so this one is just a picture. I took a picture of a client. Um, her mom got me to take some photos. And um, what I like to do, um, add a little extra value. Um, so on my phone, on the way home, I worked on this real quickly and I was able to send this photo to the parent just to let them know that I'm working on your photos. So that was just a quick put together on my iPhone. I like the way that came out. So I like think the, the, the image and the coloring and I can feel you did some Photoshop work on that. Is that true? No. no that one doesn't have no Photoshop. All right. That's good. Then. Yeah. That's yeah. just frame by frame off the phone. As a photographer, I think it's a compliment if somebody says, you know, it's good Photoshop. You say, you say to somebody, you say it's not Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, it gives gives a remark to your, your quality of your pictures you take. Yeah, yeah. On the after pictures, I sometimes had to um, do some work and stuff like that. Yeah. But when I'm working for a client and stuff like that, I like to show them, look, I already started on your project. All so right. those stuff I do over my phone on the way home, on the train, on the car and stuff like that, just yeah. to give them something. Mm -hmm. All right. Go to the next one. Ah, this is a picture I took of my friend. He DJs, and uh, this was inside a club. Um, he was with his girlfriend and stuff like that, and. Um, when you when you're holding the camera, you have to, you know, you have to capture those moments um, when people is not like expecting it. Um, you know, you raise your camera and yeah. you hope that people is not looking, and yeah. then you could just snap away and you catch them by surprise. Yeah. So you see, she was, um, she yeah, she was towards him. She kind of like saw me quickly, yeah. and he was laughing because of whatever she was doing. So, yeah, that's like a Kodak moment. <laughs> yeah. All right, next picture. And again, this is another one, uh, the, uh, another DJ that I know, uh, he introduced me to his wife and she was sitting right there and I yeah. was just trying to catch uh, a candid moment. Yeah, a candid moment. Yeah. But when she realized that I was about to take the shot, she decided to do a silly thing, which always ended up being the best. I was not expecting that, but I love how it looked. Ah, and this is a two-part video. Um, this is the, uh, I mean, the picture. Uh, this is the one that I was telling you. I don't know if you may have the other one, but um, as I was panning the room, I saw this girl and she was just standing there like by herself. So I was able to take the picture and then when I went back in Photoshop, yeah. I don't know if they have the other one. Um, she probably doesn't. Yeah, this one. So I just did a spin off of that one and just separated it even further. I like that. It seems like she's in her own world and everything's revolving around her. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I did. Cause yeah. So the way that I captured her, I'm like, I, I knew exactly when I took the photo of her in the crowd, yeah. I knew exactly what I was going to do with the photo. And sometimes when you take a picture, like you have to have an idea of what you're going to do with that photo Vision. and how you're going to use it. Yeah. You know, so the camera just captured the picture for you, but you still have to creatively work on it. So we make, we, we make a photo. That's why, that's what makes us um, creatives because yeah. we create the photo. We take the photo and then we work with it. Yes. I know when you take pictures, like you got to be, um, you have vision. The words, which, which, what's, what's there and see what's not there. Yeah. And you get what you can put in and what you move around and just see, mm -hmm. see what you can change. Mm -hmm. And one thing I like about those photos, like, you know, you got to ask yourself, is it Photoshop or not? Like I said before, it's like compliments. Like when somebody says, you know, what kind of camera do you use? When they see a picture, you kind of say compliment. They say, it's a good picture. Mm -hmm. I want to take a picture just like that. What camera do you use? You're like, no, I use a simple camera. It was not, it was my, my thought about the, the thought about the capturing the moment and the composition of the picture yeah. that actually came out. It came out and came, that's what you see. Yes. And it makes you ask that question. Yes, yes. All right, we go on to another photo. Oh, this is a photo that I did um, quick and stuff like that. It was something just to work on. So uh, a friend of mine just asked me to take a photo. And then I, this one, I actually did like a little um, Photoshop work on it okay. just to correct a couple of things. But it was one of the practice things that I was working on. Because right. as a photographer, you always continue to practice and learn and keep applying the stuff that you're practicing and learning at the same time. Gotcha. How did you learn? How did you learn Photoshop and the techniques? Photoshop, I learned from watching somebody who knows how to use Photoshop well. He's right. actually an artist, yes. so he knows how to draw and create all this stuff. So Photoshop is just an extension of his thing, just yeah. like his camera is an extension to him. So he showed me like a few years back how to do it, but until I started photographing and doing my own thing, yeah, yeah um, that's when I actually learned. When you need to learn something, you'll know it. Yeah, it comes, mm -hmm. along, it comes along in time. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Can you yeah. see the next photo? 
Yeah, I love this one. Uh, this one is definitely reworked by me. And like I told you, when I took this photo at the party, um, I knew exactly, and I actually told him to post. I took this, this, this photo um, live of him um, while he was mixing and doing stuff, and I actually asked him like about, I think I have like 25 of this same photo, Yeah. but this one is the one that captured me because it, it, it gave me what I was looking for. Gotcha. So then I went back and I blurred the background. Um, I made him like a little goldish color, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I made the colors on the mixer come out more and stuff like that, you understand? Yeah. And that's what makes a photographer like, anybody can take a picture. Yes. You've seen little kids taking pictures, you've seen old people take pictures. Anybody can take a picture. But who can do what with a photo nowadays? That's that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. All right, with the picture, one thing I noticed like you were, you had an angle, you were above him. Oh, yes. You sat on the chair? Uh, actually, they had some, um, some crates. Yeah. So I had to stack up the crates because I saw the shot. Yeah. And that's the shot that I wanted. Okay. And I'll share some of those other photos with you um, next time. And I'll show you. Um, the thing with the, with the cell phone now, yeah. everybody's used to just snapping a photo and that's it and it's perfect. Yeah. But when you're taking with a DSLR and stuff like that, a professional camera, you have to really kind of like frame it and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's not always just the shot that the people think that you got. It's the shot that you're looking after or for. I understand that. Like um, when you use DSLRs, like it's like it's, it's complicated. But once you get used to it, it comes like second nature, like another arm, or it's like it's another like it's an extension of you yourself. Mm -hmm. I find that happening with, um, with DSLR cameras also. Mm -hmm. All right, can we go over to another photo so we can talk about that one? Ah, self portrait number nine. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this one, I actually, it was something that I did on my cell phone. All right. And I kind of just reworked it through my um, through like different apps on the phone. I use Snapseed which is free from, um, from Google and stuff like that. And I was able to put a frame, I was able to do the black and white and dip in. But you have to know how to, you have to learn how to do this stuff, you know, kind of like your own and stuff like that. Yeah. Cause you never know when you have to hand your, and, and with me, I use these kind of like as my business card. Okay. The work that I do right on the spot is what sells. All right, so you have a good system going. Yes. Is there anything you wanna, you wanna add to your system and work on what your goals are for the future? Um, well, right now I was offered a chance to work with, um, with a great photographer uh, in Brooklyn. And um, I'm just waiting to find some time so I could do that and stuff, you know what I mean? Right. But um, yeah, you have to continue to expand and with people, um, you know, like the more people you meet through photography, yes. the better you get. Gotcha. And so you have to seek mentors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds great, sounds like mm -hmm. good advice. All right, is there anything else you told? All right. Oh yeah. I like this picture too. <laughs> and this one, I was experimenting because back in the days, these are uh, my the photos that I do that I add editing to. Yes. And this one, I was adding grain to the photo. And grain is what used to be in the old pictures. I don't know if you ever seen an old, old photo from like the 70s yes. and stuff like that. When you physically look at the photo, it has like little dots on it, like yes. sticking out because the ink never like dry well yes. and the way it combined. So with this, I added like grain. And I just put it up there. It was just a simple photo. Like people react well to these kind of photos in social media. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I remember from Instagram first came out. Mm -hmm. Had the one, the one, the um, filters was like a, it's like an old school camera, camera yes. filter, and it kind of added the grain like you, you just showed us in that picture just yes. in the past. All right. Um, um, can we go again to another one? Oh yes. This is what I was working with um, a friend of mine. He was showing me. Um, he does photography, my friend, um, Chris Ann, um, and he talks about nature and stuff like that. Like right now, he's actually in Africa um, photographing um, out there. And he was just showing me how to capture and create a photo and stuff like that. And I've never really done like wildlife photography. Yes. And this was a good way to practice. I went down to um, Van Collen Lake and I saw these Canadian um, geese there. And I decided, boom, let me try taking this photo. Oh, and we have a little duck, a mallard on the back too. So I was trying to like do my composition and stuff like and grab what I needed in the frame. Mm -hmm. okay. Out of all the different types of photography from landscape, um, wildlife, portraits, event, um, weddings, what kind of, which kind of best, uh, give me a list, the, the top three um, genres or types of photography that you like to use. Well, I, I photograph with like whatever. Me, myself, I, I love buildings. I love old buildings. And to me, that's like uh, like the longest living photograph ever. 
like when you see pictures of like let's say like the Empire State Building or you go downtown and you see the court buildings and stuff like that yeah. an architect which is a photographer built that yes and this is something that he shared with the world and people's gonna see it for years to come and stuff like that so um buildings I've always loved um I like working with children taking photos of children because you just tell them like do something and they do something else. And for some reason, the photography that I've done with small kids and stuff yes. like that always seem to work. Okay. I give them the instruction, but they do what they want to do Super and Sunday. it works. That's, <laughs> like, yeah, that's, luck, that's luck in your part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just lucky to have like the kids, yeah. yeah. And then I like working with professional models too. And it's because it just makes my job a lot simpler and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like, I like with portraits, just because um, people can say thank you. The picture of a duck, it might come out good. Can't really respond to it. Buildings, you know, the architects might not even allow mm -hmm. you to appreciate it. Or you can give a picture to somebody. They can say thank you. I appreciate it. I, I like the way I look. I like what you did. I like your work. So they kind of can say thank you. Um, so portraits are fun. It's, they're a lot more like in a um, studio setting. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes back to like having models and having control of the lighting and things like that. Um, so you're not actually you're not trying to meter on the on the go and trying to change shutter speed too often. You got time into do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. The band photography is kind of it's contrast the portrait photography and the studio photography, but it's um. It has its own its own quality to it. The fact that you could just um, capture things moments at a uh, moments at a time, that's a short notice, um, capture things that not, don't, they're not going to be around again for another for another while, and that seems kind of fun. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. kind of good with you there. All right, you see another photo? No, I think that was I think that's, that's all I had. Yeah. I got one, one more. more. Oh, that's the final clip that I put together. Like I tell you, you always have to add extra. Yeah. What talk on going on? Mm -hmm. Like I said, this was another thing that what I was seeing there in the train, I kind of was inspired and I just put a short clip together. And that right there kind of goes like a long way because like I actually have people that um, like clients that they want the same thing that I did for like somebody else. But like, uh, you have to kind of be like original and you can't yes. keep sending your stuff to everybody. Yeah. All right, sounds good. All right. Come on, when you were doing photography, for first started photography, what was your biggest hurdle that, that, that you ran into? Turning the camera on. Turning the camera on? Turning the camera on. Yep. Right. So once you figured out, how, how, how easy was it after that? I just snap a picture whenever I'm ready. Right. And that's it, yeah. Okay, so um, so when wants to start photography, what kind of background do you think they should have, or if it, it doesn't matter, it just no, doesn't matter. yeah, it really, it's a matter. You just pick up the camera and you and you learn your tool. Anything that you have, any equipment that you have, you have to know the equipment. You have to be the expert of your equipment, and the expert being that you know everything, or that you try to learn and and focus on this. If you're a carpenter, you have to know everything, how to use a hammer and stuff like that. Yes. You understand? If you're a photographer, you have to learn how to use your camera, your specific camera that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, go on with what you said about hammer. Uh, carpenter has to use a hammer? No, everybody, yes. Yeah, yeah. Every, every field has tools. You have to be qualified yeah, with tools. Yeah, you have to know your tools. Um, do you prefer manual settings or automatic settings when you, when you do your work? It depends because different um, situations call for different stuff. Yeah. So manual settings, when you're working in a studio place like this, you have the advantage of using manual settings. Um, but when you're on the outside and stuff like that, I did a photography course in, um, in Cleveland when I was out there, and the person, um, the instructor said, if you see a picture of Bigfoot out in the woods, and you go pick up your phone and stuff like that to tell everybody you saw Bigfoot, Bigfoot out in the, in the thing, yeah. and you worry about your setting and stuff like that, and by the time you get the right setting, Bigfoot shows off, and you try to show somebody you saw Bigfoot, yeah. and they don't see nothing there, you didn't see Bigfoot. Yeah. You understand? Gotcha. So sometimes the settings don't, don't really matter as long as you capture the moment. All right. mm -hmm. In my view of the, the industry, you have the cell phones, you have DSLRs, and you got mirrorless cameras. What are your views of mirrorless cameras? You spoke about DSLRs and cell phones. What are your views of mirrorless cameras? They're all the same. Just the uh, mirrorless cameras don't have a mirror. DSLR have a mirror reflective. Um, so what you actually see on the screen on a mirrorless is what the sensor is actually seeing. Right. So, yeah, and for some of them, it's, um, people who can afford the best one right now, the best one is, is uh, Sony's. Yes, Sony's. And everybody knows that. Um, but the price tag is not affordable to everybody. Yeah. And then people use different cameras for different reasons also. Do right. mm -hmm. uh, you find it that's an expensive hobby or a good business or both? I, I never believe in an expensive hobby. If you want to do something, you're going to find a way. Things right. are not expensive. If you care about it. 
Yeah, yeah things are not expensive because whatever right. you can find a way to pay for this, it's not expensive. Alright. Sounds great. All right, um, let me see. What are your favorite types of jobs? You talk about um, the, the benefits of the studio, the fun with the the, the spontaneity of, about events. Um, give me a third, like your top three. What if next top three the type of event would you like to have? Type of jobs would you like to have? As far as what, like just photography, business wise, customers. What would you? Oh, I like the creative side of it. I like getting more into um, like doing stuff with the uh, with the software because okay. it's way better. You snap a picture and um, you have to work. Sometimes you take a bad picture, but how can I make this picture work? Gotcha. You have your software to make it work. All right. All right. Um, I think that's it for us right now. Mm -hmm. I'd love to give you an opportunity to speak to the audience and tell them about yourself and where they can, they can find you in the future. Oh, uh, my um, stuff will be online. It's Brings in Photography. Um, yeah, my stuff is online. It's Brings in Photography. Um, Y'all can find me on um, Instagram and just reach out to me. Mm-hmm. All right, sounds great. And I appreciate your time here. Thank you. Um, again, we told you we were talking about the industry. I told you when we started, um, how are we going to say, we we're going to talk about uh, the ins and outs of the field. Um, we talked about photography, we talked about the, the types of jobs. We also spoke about mirrorless cameras, cell phone cameras, inspiration. I, I love the, the, the talk that we had and how things was, was like kind of matched together. So um, we spoke, all right. And um, let's, not, let's talk about in the future. We always want to look into the future, see the future. And the future of the children, and I want to know: Do you have any kind of ideas what that the children might have um, to what they might have to do to become photographers? Like, what would you teach them? What would you say to them? How would you try to encourage them to move on? They just pick up a camera and just start photography. It's it's, it's not hard. Anything you put your mind into is easy. Um, right. Once you um, put your mind into it, put the work necessary to learn your craft. Okay. Mm -hmm. It sounds good. So, um, would you kind of kind of give me the logistics. What would you do? The buildings, the, the equipment. Teaching the styles, like, what would you, if you, I give you a budget, mm -hmm. the New York City Board of Education, give you a budget, and they say, you know, I want to teach photography. Like, what would you teach, tell them to do? What kind of curriculum would you kind of devise for them? Well, you have to find out what they're interested in and what they want to learn how to do and stuff like that, because people are going to stick to something that they want to do. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, my kids, kids of the future, and I like to see guys in the future, and um, I'm glad you guys can't stop by today. And that's it for us here with Rafael McClara, and I'm glad he stopped by, and I'm glad you guys were able to watch. Thank you.